Hey everybody, welcome to Monday, and you notice I've shifted my camera so that you can see Momo right now, and we're going to shift the camera again because he's getting annoyed. But I wanted you guys to be able to see him, so if his head was like half in frame at any point, you're like, yeah, that's that's where Momo usually sits during Twitch and stuff like that. Now he's, he's carved himself out a uh, spot on my desk. So, uh, yep, yep, Momo, there he is. <laughs> you can just see his ear. So, uh, it's another week, and uh, we're going to talk about something sort of retrospective. Some people were very, very upset that I talked to on Twitter that there's been talk of things about feminism in video games, and I am not going to mention any names of any people or organizations because... Small minds discuss people, you know, larger minds discuss ideas, and I'm going to discuss ideas. Um, so if you appreciate this approach, even though I know that if I name dropped certain people, the YouTube algorithm, like, ten times when I'm going to get on this video, but it's just not worth it to me. Help support this channel, either monthly support via patreon.com slash or you can buy someone a coffee on coffee, uh, buy someone a Leanna Care session on coffee, coffee.com slash Leanna K. Uh, we're actually ahead of our three session goal this week. Somebody dropped a bunch of, um, a bunch of sessions on Sunday. And so we only need one more to make goal this week, which is freaking awesome. The generosity of people has just been amazing. Hello, Momo. Do you want to come sit? Yes, bless you, Momo. Okay, so. Has feminist activism actually made the gaming space better for women? Either in the content or the working conditions? Well, first we have to define what better is, right? Um, are women in games significantly more sartorially covered, meaning more clothed? Yes, that, that is an obvious measurable difference of the feminist activism, the, the sex negative feminist activism of the last 10 years. Um, is that better for women? I would argue no, because if women must be modest, to be respected, then you can wreck a woman, you can, uh, you know, strip her of all respect and dignity just by stripping her of her clothing. Obviously, that's, that is not a sustainable model, right? Because we're not born wearing clothes. Um, there are, are certain medical procedures, certain jobs that require certain, certain processes that require, um, a certain amount of unclothedness and they shouldn't be, they shouldn't be shameful. And it still is because of this requirement on women that is not required of men. And that's the thing any perpetuation of a double standard that gives any group more rights and freedoms than another group is inequality. And I'd argue that that's really the only tangible thing that the brand of feminist activism that, that is overtaking gaming in the last 10 years has, has really got to show for it. Because if you go back in the history of gaming back to the 1980s, which was supposed to be the bad old days, right? We, we see examples of games featuring, you know, rather modestly dressed women that were made all by themselves. Um, you know, a lot of them did come out of uh, Sierra, but there were others as well. I mean, there was King's Quest IV, The Perils of Rosella, female playable character, and it sold very well about with the the you know primarily um, uh, male audience that played those games, and that wasn't Roberta Williams who directed that one. That was Jane Jensen. Uh, then there was King's Quest Seven, um, The Princess Bride. That was again um, Queen Valenice and and Princess Rosella. Um, Roberta Williams did come back to that one. 
Uh, but that was as, as late as 1994, you know, and then you had games like it wasn't just the Williams's franchises. It was, um, um, well, OK, sorry, Roberta Williams did uh, direct the Colonel's bequest. I mean, the amount of stuff that came out of Sierra was was quite something. But the point is, these games sold, right? It wasn't charity that anybody was buying a a computer game for MS DOS in 1989, right? God, this this is just when third wave feminism was starting to get going. Uh, there was a sort of a backlash in the 80s to second wave feminism. It was sort of a lull period, but in gaming, like, hey, look, you look at other games, the Metroid franchise, all on their own, just thought it would be interesting, right? Um, even if you look at much maligned franchises retroactively, I mean, Metroid does get its its um, uh, uh, own sort of malignment because of Bikini Samus, but I'll fight that um, in a bit. But you look at the Tomb Raider franchise, which at that time was not, oh, let's do horrible things to women that was riot girl feminism plus hey let's make her look super aggressive and give her massive boobs and massive lips and you know hey that character was conceived as latina and at least one of her references her, her the the people she was referenced as was not white all on her own right then we look at fighting game franchises with women and women of color yes they were violent right but chun li is an icon in gaming right you've got you know mortal kombat oh scantily clad but not if you go back and look at the original mortal kombat mortal kombat 2 they were just bodysuits by the standards of the time there was nothing super risque about that those bodysuits were the same ones i wore to school and wore to dance classes. It was not, it was just considered, hey, if you're if you're exercising, you're doing certain things where your body has to move, you wear something where your body can stretch, right? It, it wasn't, we had issues in dance at the time where girls were so afraid of being seen and therefore judged because it was the era of the Kate Moss style waif. So unless you looked like you were on heroin, you were fat. Um, we had trouble um, getting girls to wear appropriate clothes for dance class so that we could see the lines of their body and make sure their techniques were correct because they wanted to wear baggy t-shirts all the time. I shouldn't say that I was one of them because I got fat shamed in dance classes and it fucked me up for a really long time. To, to put in perspective what was happening to actual girls at the time, we were being weighed in public at the dance studio and they'd announce um, what our weight was and make us track our food. So we had to come in and show the dance studio what we ate that week. This is what it was like to be a competitive dancer in the 1990s. I wish I was kidding. We know what that does to someone now. Meanwhile, in video games, you know, first of all, the women were uh, more zaftig. You know, th there were boobs and butts instead of just skinny, 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 right? Which, for me, was it was it still an ideal? Sure. But at least it was a different ideal. It gave us another option of, okay, I can't look like Kate Moss in any world but you know a woman with some more meat on her maybe i can look like that you know and then uh shiva in in mortal kombat was it three she people forget how much crap that character took at the time because she was she was a based on female bodybuilders and even at the time she was she looks like a man she's not feminine all that stuff um these developers just did it. They did it on their own, right? Were there things that weren't so great? Sure. But then we had Jill Valentine as a playable character in Resident Evil. 
and we had other games with female playable characters. I remember there was this PlayStation, was it one game called D? And it was a female playable character. Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. I mean, that had a lot of playable characters. But the main, main, main person was, was female. Developers just did that. They didn't need their arm twisted into creating a female protagonist. And a lot of these characters have, you know, passed the test of time in terms of, I can mention these characters and they're still relevant. They've, they've lasted through the ages. And even someone like Princess Peach, who is dismissed as a damsel in distress, well, if a, you know, if a girl likes her pretty dresses and doesn't want to punch people in the face, well, there's some representation in games, right? This is the weird thing about the standard sex negative feminist messaging in in video games right now is they talk about representation but it's only representation of characters they personally feel comfortable with and that's not representation (laughs) that's that's a very narrow focus right the idea is that you create enough diversity of characters that everybody can find something they relate to and I, uh, it was actually a, a, a Leanna Cares session where um, a client asked me what female characters I actually relate to in sort of nerd media because I said I, you know, I wanted to smack the shit out of Vi in, in Arcade. Not literally. She just annoyed the hell out of me because she was so one note this fake strong female character who just you know doesn't evolve because if a character has to essentially be an ideal at the beginning of a story they've got nowhere to go for the rest of the story right she's like the one character that doesn't grow at all (laughs) and so I tried to think of any female character in in recent memory that I really, really liked, and, and like not just liked, but saw myself in. And I couldn't come up with much in terms of something that it wasn't about who looks like me. That wasn't what it was about. Somebody who I could see my experience and personality and struggles in. And I can think of lots of male characters that I can see my personality and struggles in, but not too many women. The, the, the female characters just feel so box checky, right? As opposed to really creating a character that makes sense for the game. And, um, and I mean, when you, when you talk about, you know, the, and maybe like, maybe part of the problem is the, the, the games with big casts of characters now are all essentially like MOBAs and MMOs, but those are usually player created in MMOs. MOBAs have, you know, the champion structure. And maybe that's part of it that, yeah, okay, they have extended canon and all that stuff, but they're, they're very cartoony to begin with because much like, you know, fighting games of yesteryear, they're all designed to sort of be shorthands for a gameplay style um and so yeah i mean even somebody like widowmaker who when i was younger in 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 overwatch who had cosplay in a friggin' second um i don't see myself in her i see myself more in you know even freaking kratos who has to struggle with shit i mean widowmaker does don't get me wrong but you're talking about a real difference in depth of character. And when you look at characters like even Lara Croft now, the reimagined Lara Croft, there is just a lot less to her than there was pre reimagining. Those last few Crystal Dynamics games, um, the what was it, the Legend Timeline? She was so well-defined that you knew every Lara Croft game was going to be, she gets the shiny, she, you know, 
finds out the secret, but there's some sort of personal loss. She doesn't actually get the emotional thing that is driving her her need to seek this stuff out and all the stuff with her dad and the stuff with her mom. And I mean, OK, she did. She look like any real woman on the planet who hasn't had huge amounts of surgery. No. But graphics at the time, you couldn't make realistic people. It was the writing of the character and the the progression and and the human soul in those stories that I'm like, there's a person here. She's a, a, a Byronic style anti-hero. She's mad, bad, and dangerous to know. And there is a definitive Lara Croft story. I don't know if that was by accident, but it worked really well for um, Anniversary through, you know, all the stuff with, I mean, they, they retold Jacqueline Natla, but then the stuff, I mean, the stuff with Lara's mom was just heartbreaking, but you saw it coming because the character was so well-defined. You can't say that about the modern Tomb Raider games. Those plots are shallow as shit. And, you know, we are at the point where if you see the, the, the Alicia Vikander Tomb Raider movie, the big climactic scene the big action climax in the Tomb Raider movie based on the rebooted character are two old dudes fighting with each other while Lara hides behind a statue and watches. And we're seeing that, I mean, Wonder Woman 1984, Wonder Woman is a passenger in her own movie, except for, you know, when she kind of commits sexual assault against a guy who's boring Steve Trevor's, uh, Steve Trevor's boring his body, spoiler. Um, you know, we, we have lost that idea of women are people instead of strong female characters. Like, the junk that is just pushed out is women are either crazy and that you're allowed to be interesting if you're nuts. If you're, if you're out of control, insane, and divorced from reality, you are allowed to be interesting. Otherwise, you have to be brutally violent and scowly or a victim. It's basically the game the game, game of Tr Thrones triptych. You know, you're either Arya, Sansa, or, or Cersei. Or Daenerys who sort of floats through. <laughs> she, she starts off as a victim, becomes, um, like, super violent, and then she goes crazy. Spoiler again. It has been enough time. That this stuff comes out and and you know when they you know e even the new star wars stuff yeah it took ahsoka tano a while to sort of hit the level she did but um none of the characters for episode seven eight nine came close to even ahsoka as a kid you know yet yeah, she had a lot of time in those dave filoni cartoons to develop the the sequel characters have not but again, in all the fighting over Mary Sue, it's just lost that sometimes a bad character is a bad character. And if there was this big push that was effective feminist advocacy, you wouldn't see these kind of shitty characters. Because if you look at the output... During the second wave, you know, you got stuff like the bell jar, which, yes, about a, about a mentally ill person, but very specific. The, the character had edges and details. And, you know, you saw the, the interesting women coming out of second wave feminism, interesting depictions of women in media that then filtered down into things like um uh oh, what's her name margot kidder i almost called her margot robbie uh margot kidder's lois lane in the 79 superman christopher reeves film you would never 
have a character like that now in a superhero movie. She was quirky. She was flawed. She was off balance, but she was never brought low or had this big speech of I know who I am, girl power shit. She was just a character. And I was too young to sort of really appreciate what that movie was doing there. The more I go back and watch that movie, um, the more I go... All right, what they did was really, really cool. Another example of that is Adrian in the Rocky movies, Talia Shire's character. They could have gone with the whole trophy thing uh, because, you know, main character marries his sweetheart, but they didn't. She was this shy kind of, I forget what her actual job was. I think she worked at a pet store. Um, I love the Rocky movies, but that was a male oriented movie about a boxer, an athlete, and they put a nerd in as his, as his love interest and the studio let them do it. You know, that was pre all this stuff that, it, and, and that's the thing that's really important to focus on when you look at the impacts of advocacy Media trends in a particular form of media do not exist in the in a vacuum. You have to look holistically at what's going on in um, TV and film and like everything, not just video games, because everything borrows from each other, right? And if you look at the real place where interesting female characters exist, it's, it's television right now. It's not film because there are too many fucking cooks. A every so often one slips through like that, the, the Bond girl single scene character in, in, um, uh, shit. What's it called? No Time to Die. Um, but, you know, if you look at even network procedurals, which, I mean, some of them are so long in the tooth right now. They're much better, interesting, developed female characters than um, most video games right now. A single episode of Blue Bloods <laughs> has more interesting female character development than the average video game right now. Um... I actually highly recommend that show. And that surprises me because network crime procedural, oh God, I am so sick of those. But Blue Bloods has really good characters and it's not just one. Like every woman on that show is complex and challenging and unique and has their own perspective and it's really, really well done. And then they have to solve crimes or, or you know, lawyer or something like that every episode. And then if you even go to something fluffy, like Magnum P.I., those female characters, and yes, it's a gender swap, um, because, uh, what's his name? I forget the actor who played Higgins, but he's dead. So, you know, I was like, I'm not sure this is going to work for me, but I love that cast now. The woman who plays, um... Uh, Juliet Higgins, she, yeah, she's super, super skinny. It's like, oh my God, so skinny. But she's badass and she's interesting. And there's a character there and she's not just badass. She doesn't spend the whole time scowling. She has moments where she's a human being and she's funny. And, and there, there are notes, there are levels, there is the light and dark, you know, there, there. And this is network television. Now, what's different there? Well, primary demographic for network television is women. 35 to 50, I believe. It could be a little wider than that. But people who buy laundry soap and dish detergent and uh, those like Swiffers and things like that where the original vacuum isn't that expensive, but oh my God, those refill things, but they're just so convenient and make cleaning up cat pee so easy. Enough about my life. Okay. Um, somehow... TV has managed to make female characters on shows that men and women both watch, but, you know, the, the advertiser demographic is, you know, the desirable one is women, um, older women. They somehow manage 
to make really interesting female characters 40 some odd minutes at the time at a time uh every single one of those procedural dramas has better female characters than what's coming out of video games right now and that's not because they have the time to unpack the character video games have a hundred hours to unpack a character right because it's not advocacy that's driving that decision it's money the people who make these shows want women to watch their shows because they know that women have an advertiser amplifier effect it is advertiser driven therefore you have to sell ads ads want those women now um so they 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 hire writers who know how to work right for that demographic they make content that is interesting to a wide range of people because there's money in it nobody had to shame those shows into doing that the market had them do it there's leona going on about capitalism again proof's in the pudding look at the results these are things we can measure jump over to gaming with all the lip service and all the screaming and yelling and all the gamers are bad well women are still not seen in AAA as unattainable desirable primary demographic or strong secondary demographic and so you get a lot of lip service about female characters but really you can tell just by the products which games have their heart in it and which are we have to do this so we don't get screamed at and the problem is that i've heard from a lot of dev teams off the record and i'm not going to say which ones because i don't want to blow a source okay um a lot of these triple a a lot of these AAA teams want hardwired female playable characters and they're told no you have to make it a man or a woman it has to be like you know you pick so like in Mass Effect or something like that that's not the same as being able to create a character that it's meaningful that she's female or it's meaningful that he's male I mean god of war for instance kratos's role as a father is super relevant we don't get stories like that about mothers as the main character because you don't get games that can get greenlit on that scope about a mom they don't think that men can see themselves in that character my question is why not because i'm sitting here going i relate to the male characters in gaming just because they're interesting and they feel like developed people i mean okay um we can we can credit amy hennig for a lot of that in the uncharted franchise um and she's gone now and you can feel it but you know if women can relate to men and not just oh i understand what's going on i see myself in this character because there's something more to them than their presumed plumbing right why can't men do that with women considering that's what male gamers were doing on those games i cited back in the day before any of this was forced well because it's all just don't get in trouble now instead of you know swing for the fences let people tell the story they want to tell you know artistic freedom is said with an eye roll now but i don't know we did pretty well with artistic freedom back when four people could make a game for a relatively modest budget i don't get the eye rolling now because you know I i've heard what certain dev teams wanted to do with certain games and some of them did want a female character that's it just a female character um no male option but they were forced to put it in for economic reasons 
the same things are driving video games as are driving TV, the examples I gave. The only difference is who is perceived to consume these products reliably, who, who is gettable, right? And what the assumption is, what the assumptions are regarding what they want to see in content. And I think the assumptions about male gamers are wrong. And I don't, I don't care what market testing says because anybody that's worked in, in creative anything knows people don't really know what they want until you give it to them. And yes, slow baby steps, right? Uh, but Horizon Zero Dawn sold well. Horizon Forbidden West seemed to sell even better. Um, you know, um, Far Cry 6 is doing very, very well. And that's a bunch of Latin, like Hispanic people, right? You know, gamers will play as people who don't look like them. And yet, here's why I think that that uh, feminist activism, I should have said activism, not advocacy, it's different. But here's why I think feminist activism is actually holding gaming back. Because the activism wasn't about the advancement and championing of women, either behind the scenes or, or in front of the camera, so to speak. It was men are bad. And you see that in games now. It's like, I don't want to get called bad. So we're just going to play it safe. It isn't about inner longing anymore. It isn't about um, men relating to female characters and then relating to female colleagues as we are all humans. We have points in common. We can understand each other. It's... I am bad and must have guilt and I'm so sorry for existing. Not really. Why do I have to say this? I know I'm supposed to. That doesn't create good art or good entertainment product because at the core of anything, no matter how stupid it seems on the outside, no matter how pandering or titillating or just dumb, there's an element of risk, right? Because when you try to be funny, you're revealing what you think is funny, right? You're putting yourself out there. You guys know I do utterly ridiculous comedic things, right? It's, it's scary because I'm making a fool out of myself for other people's entertainment and hoping people get it, hoping people understand I'm being deliberately ridiculous. You'd be amazed how many times people don't get that, right? It's a risk. It's an element of risk. It's, it's, it's vulnerable. And if people are entering that vulnerable place from a position of, I'm bad, 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 you get shitty entertainment because nobody's having fun. And you can feel that. Um, and that's part of the reason I, I we're doing the Song of Sparkle Muffin game the way we are because we're inviting people's feedback and you know I I think it's kind of cool every time um a male backer I mean we we needed <laughs> to be completely honest we needed some white straight cisgender male viewpoint because we we have a community a, a community manager when we launch a discord who's who's a white straight cisgender male I mean I assume <laughs> I haven't, I guess. Yeah, okay. Um, but um, that's it uh, on on the dev team. And so we, we kind of needed that point of view. Even in a game with a fairy tale princess, I, I want that. Because, um, I mean, one glaring, one, gla one glaring omission we did from the original crowdfund is we didn't have any sexy furry ladies in the marketing materials. They're in the game, but we didn't put any in the materials it was just a blind spot we had because of the team. And so we took that feedback and went, all right, we need to make it a bit more obvious that 
there's more facets to the game that and you can't show everything right but i think that's kind of a funny we probably would have brought in a bit more money had we had that in the original materials oversight i thought princess sparkle pony was super cute i thought that was the female uh representation but people are like no we want you know the more the we want the approachably sexy not the stuff of nightmares fair enough um this is what happens when you include people and i come at this from you know my point of view and what i'm interested in and if you had told me that the first game i i i took point on was going to be about a blonde fairy tale princess i i would have said you know 15 year old me i would have been like are you fucking shitting me because 15 year old me was playing resident evil and mortal kombat I and mean, i think i was 16 when i played resident evil um but it, you know it was no that wasn't what i was into that's not the games i play but that was what interested me as a designer because of the okay she's not violent she's a healer and she sings okay that's different for a main character right uh, eternal sonata had a bit of that stuff like that more more japanese you know, it's definitely more of a Japanese type thing, which is why we went sort of classic JRPG with the graphics to sort of explain it. Oh, I know what this is, right? But it, it what people end up making is not necessarily um, as simple as the way feminist activist analysis makes it seem. Um, people, you know, people might assume that there are certain things you're supposed to relate to with Princess Sparkle Muffin that you're not, um, you know, a couple people with the boss fight web series went, oh my God, she's, <laughs> she's the only one with her shit together in this whole show. And, and that was sort of the thing is that she was raised by parents that were overprotective, but did love her. She had that stability. So of course she's going to be more together than somebody like poor Solomon, who is just a hot mess, right? He's, he's, he's been abused repeatedly by multiple people. And so, you know, we're inverting things a little bit there that the man doesn't always have to be strong and the woman's not victimized, even though she gets captured again and again. But that's sort of become her superpower in terms of a death mechanic or, or a substitute for a death mechanic. This is how game dev works in, hello, Momo, in ways that film and TV don't. It's not just what story do I want to make. It's what story do I want to make that other people are going to want to play? Because you're telegraphing the experience and people see how the character and the gameplay work together. That's what feminist advocacy should have been doing in the gaming space for the last 10 years. Instead, it's just been men are bad, men are bad, men are bad. They have to be coerced to put women in their games. And that's just not the history. That was a, a relatively minor deviation uh, during the Xbox era because Xbox was creating a form of gamer that didn't actually exist for marketing purposes. To try to every, as gamers got older, and I know this video is going on a bit long, but I'll, I'll leave it here. Um, explaining some of the things that men are bad right now. Post Atari crash. Nintendo gets marketed as a toy, right? So same to children. Well, Sega wants to compete in the space. So Sega creates a console for teenagers oh it's better graphics it's a different type of game it's it's not kid stuff like nintendo right no it's it's we got the blood code in mortal kombat right we have things like altered beast fucking cool game man altered beast cool as shit um there's a lot of furry content to this video right momo right um 
but then you know the playstation comes along and we get oh my god the, the you know the the type of stories we can do this is sort of um this is a, a more depth of storytelling and you start getting more um it, it pulls everything into sort of a more mature space why because that core demographic of nintendo generation like original nes generation or even even atari people like me who the sega was more aimed at i preferred that system because of my age um we're getting older and want stories that reflect that but then the xbox comes out and wants the college student they want the bro right and this is when we start skewing the perception of gamers but it was always a marketing creation it wasn't reflecting reality it was creating a parallel dimension and the primary feminist advocacy over the last 10 years convinced large swaths of game dev that that marketing push that marketing construction was actually their primary consumer when it never was it was a cover so you could play video games and seem cool to the biggest asshole you consider a friend yeah you know, it's not a nerd thing it's a bro thing it's a guy thing you can be cool now you can still beat up nerds and play video games right call of duty madden man tiny percentage of the gaming market depend uh, based on who actually plays games and that that's that's another that's the other major thing that i think feminist activism did in the last 10 years is they made the expro more real than that trope ironically really should have been interested in your feedback on this help support this channel become a monthly patron patreon.com slash liana k or liana care sessions so that i can help people kind of screwed up by the last 10 years uh coffee.com slash liana k thanks for watching